Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time for another Transformers review. And, as I had stated earlier, this is going to be a hodgepodge month. Although I might have leaned more towards doing Power of the Primes, due to the fact that I got a good boatload of these toys. But I very seldom did any reviews for any of them. So, let's get down and fix that real quick. We're going to take a look at one of the many toys that came out in that line. This is Moonracer. Moonracer, of course, is one of the female Autobots that was somewhat featured in the 1980s cartoon. She was apparently a friend to Power Glide. And kind of had the personality of the little sister that's always optimistic. Even when she has no right to be. Power Glide describes her as being the best sharpshooter in the galaxy. Hopefully he knows what he's talking about. But at any rate, Moon Racer was one of the figures released in that lineup. So she also doubles as a combiner component. Since her body can be done up to be either an arm or a leg to any of the combiners that were featured in that line. Although most fans like to have saved her and Nova Star and Alita One up and get them with a couple of figures that came out after the Power of the Primes in the Siege line to build an all female combiner. Which, in a lot of ways, makes the most sense. Especially since while Hasbro released a lot of these combiner figures in Power of the Primes, there really wasn't a lot of organization to it. They released all the Terracons to make Abominus. They redid all the Dinobots to be Volcanicus. And of course you can save for all the girls after the fact and you can get the female combiner whose name escapes me at the moment. But then that left two other combiner bodies in the form of Inferno and Starscream. And there isn't enough guys left to make a complete combiner for either of them. So, kind of poor planning on your part, Hasbro. At any rate, let's take a look here at Moon Racer's accessories. We'll start off with her gun. Which is a nice, sort of standard black rifle. It does have a scope at the top of it, so that kind of goes well with her being a sharpshooter. As she should have some sort of enhancements on her gun to help in her aiming. And then, of course, lastly, her last accessory is, of course, this prime sheet and prime armor. Like all the prime armor that was released with these toys, it's color coded so that it matches her color scheme. These are meant to be attached to the robots specifically when they're in robot mode like this. It can be used as a shield or it can be attached to her body to be armor. But its main usefulness is when she is a combiner limb as this can attach to the back. If she is as a leg, it will provide some extra stability for the giant. Or, as you can see back here, you have a set of fingers folded in. You would fold that out, and then it becomes a giant hand for the combiner. So all in all, this was a rather ingenious use of pieces. 
And of course here in the middle it's got this trans blue piece that is removable. This is for a prime core to be attached inside or one of the little prime figures that was introduced in the line and it would grant her special abilities. What sort of abilities she would gain depended on which prime character was attached inside. That left a little bit of room for play, but unfortunately it kind of was clouded up with the way Hasbro did it. None of the little prime figures came with anything that really described what they did or what they could do. We had to rely on trading cards that came with each figure. The problem was, was that those trading cards only covered how they would be if they were presented with one prime figure. <clears throat> and since there were about 10 to 12 of those characters available, they seem to expect us to go out and buy multiples of the toy to figure out what all they could do. Or research it on the internet. I think it would have been better off if the little primes all came and said, Hey, this is what I do, and if I'm plugged into this robot, this is what I will grant. At least to me, that just seems smarter. At any rate, here, let's take a look at Moonracer's articulation. Her head can be turned from side to side. And it apparently comes off very easily, too. But as you can see there, her head is on a ball joint. So she should just snap back into place. Now I've seen Ultraman decapitated. I've had Power Rangers mistakenly decapitated. Now I've decapitated a Transformer. Oh, boy. As her head is on a ball joint, it will rock up and down. Get these things folded back out of the way, like they should be. Her arms can reach out about so far, and they do rotate at the shoulder all the way around, but you will have to shift it so it clears her back. Her arms do bend at the elbow, about 90 degrees. And she does have a slight swivel at her bicep. So she does have G.I. Joe style battle grip. She can be twisted just beneath her waist. You can spread her legs apart into a full splits. She does have a bit of a thigh cut so you can adjust her legs that way. You can raise her legs at the hip 90 degrees and you can bend her legs at the knee 90 degrees. In fact, she has double-jointed knees, so even better. And, of course, her foot can be positioned as well, but that's more for transforming her than for actual battle poses. Okay, we're going to transform Moon Racer now. To do that, the first thing we have to do is we line up her legs and get them brought together down here at her feet. Once they've been connected, we will fold up her feet, and that will help start to form the front of the car. Once that's been done, we rotate her legs all the way around, like so. Then we're going to come around here to her back. We will start to adjust her legs a bit so that we can fold down this section of her back and get it snapped into place and connected to the front end of the car. Then of course once that's done we will grab a hold of her and rotate her above her waist 
so that now our body is facing us again. We'll lift up her body area, like so, leaving the wheels behind, so that way we can fold her head backwards and rotate it around, like so, to bring out the rear of the car. And then we will fold that back down. The next, we're going to bring her arms up here. We're going to fold her fists inwards, like so. And then we bring her arms backward a bit by bending the elbows. And shifting them back a bit more. So that way we can fold up the fenders and then her arms should attach like so there's a little bit of light blue armor protruding out from the armor near her hands and you would just connect that here to the back of the bump to the back of the rear fender And then, there you have it. Moonracer transforms into a Cybertronian-styled car. Now, of course, while she's in this mode as well, you can have her store her gear. Her prime armor can be attached onto the top of the car, like so. And then alongside her arms, there are holes protruding out where you can insert her gun on either side. And then there you have it. She's some sort of Cybertronian car. Now if you got all of her waist pieces lined up properly, her wheels should all touch the ground. If they're not, then you may need to make some slight adjustments to get all the wheels on the ground. How well does she roll? Fairly good. Fairly good, at least. I will give it that. So now we get down to my thoughts about Moon Racer. Moon Racer was a great toy to add into the line, just like adding any of the female characters has been over the past number of years. It helps to show off the diversity for the Transformer toy line. The female characters did appear back in the 1980s cartoon, but Hasbro being the way they were at that time, plus they knew the sales figures would back them up on it, they didn't make any of the female Transformer characters. Because they knew from any of the others that were done from any boy's toy line, the female characters were always poor sellers. Mainly due to the fact that the toy line is primarily targeted at boys. Never mind the fact that even though it may be targeted at boys, there are some girl fans of the series. <clears throat> As they ought to know, there are many female fans of G.I. Joe that also have encouraged that onto their own daughters. The Transformers is being shared by both fathers and mothers to their sons and daughters recently. Hence, that's why these female characters are getting made and getting more prominent attention. <clears throat> As for this one, it's a good figure to have. The only thing that I dislike about Moon Racer, and it has nothing to do with Moon Racer herself, it goes more with the Hasbro cheapness due to the fact that, but all that, not only does she use this mold, but it's also used for Nova Star, Greenlight, and Lancer. So the design itself gets rather dull very fast. But it also means that out of all the combiner figures to come out of the Power of the Primes lineup, theirs is the easiest to put together. 
due to the fact that all four of the limb pieces are the same vehicle. So transforming them is a relatively simple process. And that's my review of Moon Racer. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And if you are a fan of the content we provide on this channel, we do ask that you please like, share, comment, and subscribe, because we appreciate the feedback. Especially on something like this, because I have reviewed Greenlight and Lancer on this channel, but I haven't covered Nova Star or Alita 1, or their combined form, so that may be coming up in the future. And if all of you insist upon it, it may happen sooner. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.